Welcome to the channel, folks. Clunkers and Classics. We're got a couple, <laughs> one step forward and about five steps backwards. We got to change over the whole suspension. Somebody turned it into a low rider. Thing rides like a wheelbarrow, has no suspension. They put in lowered springs. It's a, it's a mess. I drove it one lap around here and anyway we're waiting on them parts in the meantime uh we're gonna swap windshields so this here's the 91 rs parts car and uh we're stripping her down last episode we took off the door panels that we're gonna put in the 85 and uh the windshield looks pretty good it's been replaced before I uh, took off the wipers and this little cowl shield here and so if you're gonna do one of these take off all the trim take your dash pad out your trim along here out uh, especially if you're taking one like this one to save you don't want no chance of cracks when you're taking an old one out that's already busted it don't matter too much but uh, I'll show you here in a little bit once you get the uh, let's wait for the air compressor to uh, get full we're gonna blow all this shit out of here I looked it over real good I couldn't find any cracks and this stuff here is good you should be able to buy this separate if you don't have one but uh, we're taking it out from the inside so we're not gonna damage this at all um, so I got two tools that I use. One's an air-powered tool, and the other one's just a long blade. Uh, well, you put a blade in it. I'll get them out here in a, in a second. So yeah, that's what we're gonna start on the windshield. Uh, the brakes, I haven't bought anything yet. Couldn't get any fluid coming out of the calipers on this so, and then I tried it with this one same with this one so I snipped the hose here and finally some fluid came out so I'm thinking it's just these hoses um, they're $23.99 at AutoZone uh, but they don't have them in stock but so I think that's what we'll do uh, change the hoses and then if it still doesn't bleed fluid bleed through the bleeder hole then we'll change the calipers now the calipers at o'reilly's are 29.99 but that's without a i l e or something performance package and it's the same part number for a 91 and an 85 without the performance package if you 29.99 if, if it's the performance package 64.99 so shh i don't know this one's got this one's an irock z and it's got the uh disc brake rear end and everything so i don't know so anyway i'm gonna go down there how oh, probably tomorrow and order them brake cave brake hoses and swap them over and see what happens Okay, because they were about $40 on eBay, so 30 at local. But we're just doing the front for now because uh, we don't know about this rear end. Those rear end calipers, I didn't look them up at AutoZone, but they're over $100 each. But then if it's just the hoses on the front, it's probably the hoses on the back. So anyway, we got some work to do, but we'll start with the front. Okay, let me get the uh, tools and I'll show you how how I take out a windshield. Be right back. Hi right, guys, this is the tool I use here. I got this off eBay years ago. Uh, I just told, <laughs> I pulled a lot of windshields with that. This thing, I'm just afraid of one day that breaks because I don't have another one. Anyway, you hook that on your air hose and you stick it in. The edge here now obviously you can't get all the way down there and you want to get it nice and even like this 
then you stick it in the bottom and your thing's going to be kind of thick you stick it in the very bottom and push against the frame not the windshield because you'll crack it so you get it in there and don't stop uh, because if you do and you go to try to put it back in you won't get it in right so you'll have a little bit still stuck together there you know what I mean uh, anyway you just go all the way around like this you see the urethane right there you want to get in behind it all the way around now this bottom you, you, you can't get it in there and you don't want to uh, you don't want to jam it in you, you can probably get a, a little a little bit of it but this is what this tool this is uh, you got to use a lot of strength this tool here and you can see all the beat marks on it because you can put it in there and be and it, it takes so much strength to jam it in there and work it all the way uh, so sometimes I tap it when I run out of energy but we're doing that with, with the other tool so this is around for corners get a nice new blade on there and they'll dull out quick and you get in there in the corners as far as you can and just keep slicing like this see and then this bottom here if you can see it's the other things way down the bottom but what you don't want to do is force this windshield at all you get it a little bit loose and i see people you know be a little bit loose and then crack it right down so uh yeah these will be for the like the corners you scrape them like this in the bottom corners and we'll figure out this bottom here it's i'm not hitting it what i've done before on these is weld another blade get another blade so it's like that long put a couple little tacks real quick tacks welds on there you reach in there farther and do it but yeah it's secret is uh patience take your time get it all cut out then just lift the windshield out because any little force is going to crack it so anyway uh let me get going on it and i'll probably show you a little bit okay guys i'll show you a little bit of it here got it balanced on the column so anyway I'm gonna start in here go deep and okay you get the hint of it Okay, just do that all the way around, and I'll be back. Okay, guys. A uh, few of these areas I cut out like this because it was up against the windshield. So doing that, I can get it. I can get this tool and get at the urethanes right, probably about there. So. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't do this to your own car putting a windshield in, but this is just a junk parts car, so. Yeah, just, uh, so you can get the tool in and do it that way. But be very careful and keep it against the metal and not jerk it around like that. It'll bust the windshield. And yeah, this windshield has been replaced before because it's, when I, even when I took that dash out, it was just all, pieces of glass and everything there so yeah I pretty much got it doing that bottom except for the corners and like I said on the corners take your knife and just get it in like this as far as you can and just keep cutting and cutting and cutting 
and uh, till it's all loose. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got it cut out. Had to weld a, another blade on there, and mainly the corners, and to get in here. So I got it all completely loose, completely loose. Uh, pulled it up, made sure it was completely loose, laid it down, and then I came back and I was finding a spot for it. And I put my hand in like this to lift it up, and it went cracked all the way down the middle. I couldn't believe it. See it here? All the way down the middle. And I don't know why. See, there was some chip glass up here from that machine, I guess. From that tool. But not there. Oh. Might have been right from there. See, there was a couple of chips there. I lifted it. it So, I don't know guys. It don't happen very often and I was real careful. I've been at this for a couple hours just being very, very careful of cutting it out. So, I don't know. I got the other Camaro parts card at the windshield's good, but I don't know. Seemed like a lot of uh, wasted time. See, we don't have uh, cheap windshield guys around here. Back when I lived in Dallas, oh, back in the day, you'd get them to drive out to your house and do a windshield for 110 bucks in a common type car. Uh, so I don't know what the prices are now, but nobody comes out this way out in the country. One guy used to. He used to travel around all the uh, I don't know, 300 mile radius and do, you know, load up 100 windshields and go do them all in a few days or something. But uh, I think, I think he retired or something. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we ain't got those type of guys. Yeah, we, we, we got a, a regular shop there you can bring it to. Yeah, but it'll be, you know, seven, 800 bucks instead of a hundred and something. Uh, I can get them from a, the local junkyard here he orders them from the supplier in Dallas has them the next day but he'll, he'll charge 50 bucks so if the windshield's a hundred he'll charge 150 uh, I don't know what they are now uh, during COVID there was just a backlog and they didn't have nothing and during that time I think I used a bunch of bunch of uh, used windshields on I think the Aspen uh, a couple of, couple of cars anyway, I ended up doing them myself because you couldn't even get them. Uh, so I don't know, I could check on a new windshield, uh, go up, go down there and ask them. But yeah, it pisses me off because that was a newer windshield and see this glass was all from the previous glass. So anyway. We'll figure something out. Okay, in the meantime, I'll move on to something else. I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the spare tire holder out. It just uh, mounts in there and underneath this lip. So I just drilled out the spot welds. Now, it's a different than the, this is a 91. It's different than the 85. See that this goes underneath the quarter panel lip there and uh, you can see how far it is away from the wheel well you can see here it's touching it's touching there and it's only got one bracket whereas that one has two 
and it only mounts right right here so from here and here but basically it's the same car so we're just going to mount that one the way it was mounted on the other car so i'll be back hey guys i got it cleaned up ready to weld on there here's the man they are completely different aren't they but yeah here was the piece why they why they cut out that section no idea so anyway i just got it lined up here and we got uh i don't know what they did here they cut out something there's cut marks where that thing was welded on there so i don't know what they're going there but we'll get a little patch in there maybe from underneath or something but anyway let me weld this on there i'll be back okay guys i've got to weld it up here ground down and uh i'm gonna put a piece of metal here through the other side so got her welded down there pat a little patch there she's in there solid now i just gotta round up a, a mini spare that uh is supposed to go in there I got a bunch. I don't know if any any of them fit GM, this bolt style. So anyway, that's that for now. Uh, these coil springs are red too. So yeah, he bought the whole set of lowering springs. So I think we'll take the springs off of this one, the rear ones. Got new ones for the front coming. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, I got the uh, rear coil springs out of the parts car and the uh, isolators and uh, it's got no no suspension now, although this side looked like it had enough clearance to get her back over there that this one's rubbing. But yeah, there you go low rider guys, all you have to do is take the coil springs out if you want a low rider. Just leave them out same ride okay so I'm gonna take a tape measure and measure right up to here and then uh, put these coil springs on well once they're out we'll size them up but we'll see how much farther up it lifts them I bet it's a two inch drop springs they used Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Here's the one that just came out of that. Now, they look the same uh, height. See, they look the same height. But, you can tell these ones here are more together. So I went ahead and put that one in and it raised it up one inch. It was 27, now it's 28. So I guess they're different tension. So I'm gonna put this one in here and then we'll we'll deal with the front when the new front ones come. But yeah, I raised the ass end up an inch, so that's good. Uh, we need the front up at least two inches okay i'll be back okay guys i'll show you how to take the coal spring out uh jack up the car take the wheel off get this jack put a little bit of tension on the bottom of the rear end and then all you got to do is take this take this bolt off here for the shock figures it's turning uh three of them pop right off there i have to get some vice grips on the other end of that anyway you pop the bottom of the shock loose it just pulls away from it drop the jack down the coil spring should come out if it doesn't 
we got a little jack here, which I uh, uh, can stick in here like that. And it's really only got to come down about an inch. And then this will just slide right out. See how loose it is? It'll just slide right out. Slide your other one in there. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, just undo the shock, pull it away from the deal. I don't know, I think they had this stripped on there. Not rusty or nothing, just, I don't know. Anyway, I can't find my big crowbar, so I've just been using this little, just get that like that. Pop it up like that. And then uh, put your old one in, make sure that's on the, uh, the other one fell out uh, right here. Make sure that's right on that edge there, like that. Let the crawl underneath there. Kind of hold that on there like that. Stick it back in. Um, yeah, and once you get the spring in, just put the shock back on. Jack it up a little bit, put the shock back on, and then that's it. Uh, the, new shocks haven't come yet the i got new shocks coming for the back uh anyway let me put this on and i'll be back and we'll measure it out okay guys i just measured it it's about an inch inch and an eighth higher than it was before both sides so even though they were the same height just has different spring capability so anyway we know that's factory <laughs> factory 35 year old springs but that's more factory height than that is okay i just got the uh front ones in they look really really tall but we'll find out look at them suckers they're for the front uh says it fits a whole bunch of different cars so it said right in there 85 camaro so Okay, let's get back to the windshield. I just went down to that local junkyard. Uh, the guy, give me a deal kind of thing. Uh, 140 bucks. Not installed, just 140 for the windshield. He's having it shipped in from Dallas. It's Friday now. He's, they don't, junkyard, they don't open on the weekends. So, but he says if they deliver it tomorrow, he'll call them after... 12 o'clock and I go pick it up if not it'll be Monday so anyway we'll save that for next video putting a window in um, so how do the professionals do it professionals will not guarantee them not cracking a win uh, used windshield taking one out most of them won't even do it uh, but yeah they won't guarantee it but what they use is like a sawzall tool it kind of looks like a sawzall tool here and what it has it only moves like a fraction just more or less vibrates and it's got a long thin putty knife looking blade on it right and the thing is the the, the tool is like over 300 bucks then I don't know how long the little putty knife things last because they're really thin to cut through the urethane. But I think they're about 35 bucks each. So, you know, you, you could screw one up by going too far here and hitting a metal edge. Or you could, you know, be careful with it and it might last a few windshields. So anyway, the tool I used was 65 bucks, And I screwed up by that cowl underneath here i'm pretty sure that's where the crack started from uh and i must have chipped it well i chipped it there and there okay so <laughs> i remembered that uh you know they make some resin or whatever to fix cracks well i go on youtube and there's a little short two minute video and uh I guess it was a joke. Uh, it says make have a little bit of water. It, they, there's no narration. It's just they show it. 
so I guess it's like foreign or whatever and mix some rubbing alcohol some bug spray and some salt stir it up and then brush it on let it sit for two hours then pour water over it and it'll disappear and it showed it and it disappeared <laughs> so I looked at the comments half of them say oh I tried it it worked and the other half was this is just a joke it's it don't work there's no bonding capabilities in any of them ingredients so anyway I tried it it didn't work uh, so then I had some uh, super glue and I used a tube of it you can see some of it here and I spread it all in there and let it sit overnight and then this is what I scraped I scraped the rest off like this the top layer off with a razor blade so uh, as you can see it didn't work now it, it cracked on the you know glasses two pieces of glass in the middle is plastic right you can see here it's, sam it's plastic sandwiched together by two pieces of glass and you gotta figure this the windshield's been changed before. I forget the name of it. It's on the other side. It's just uh, cheap, probably thinner than factory. So the crack is just on the inside. It's not on the outside because, you you know, you could feel it with your fingernails. So chances are this is not going to re-crack again. Uh, but I can't make this crack disappear. And I don't know, 140 bucks for a new one would be better than looking at the crack. So anyway, I got one coming, guys. Probably wait for next video. Uh, at least the new windshield. I don't have to clear all the old urethane. What you would do is take a take a razor blade and just go like this and take all that old urethane off. New windshield won't have any of that. So we can just spread the urethane on the on the window frame after I get the old one out, spread it around, and uh, plop the new windshield in. And it's going to come with a new. See, this ended up kind of coming apart, so I took that out. That slides into the the groove there. Uh, so anyway, it should come with a new one. So anyway. It's no problem putting them in it's easy but taking them out okay so we got that done well not done but the coal springs done okay stuff is starting to come in this is the light switch here uh, this one is still doing the same I mean, now it's working but you turn it a certain way it's kind of to make the, the bulbs go di uh, dim and that's your your uh, inside lights if you don't have the, if you have the door closed but this was still coming out like that so it wasn't latching wasn't latching on the inside of this now how this works is you put that shaft in there and you push this little deal here and kind of wiggle it and then it comes out it unlocks okay so that is in like this but you got to take these gauges out which we're going to do here in a little bit i'll drop the, i just got the column just hand tight we'll pull them gauges and you can get at that and uh there's a deal here that screws in so anyway we'll put that in and then these dash bulbs here I got I think they're seven or eight bucks for two packages okay they're I think they're LEDs they said so these are your dash lights here and you would pull them out use two hands pull that out like that and then put these in like that Okay, and then screw them into your dash lights. So I'm going to replace all the lights with these. Uh, hopefully they work. They said right on the auction, if it don't work, take this out, turn it 180 and put it in. 
so I don't know how good the connections are here it's it's the problem is it's hard to test them before you put them in because it's got two plugs that are built in there you get it snap it in to test it and how are you gonna tell if all of them are on but anyway we'll do that uh, it'll be dark here tonight a couple hours and I'll come out here and turn this on and it should be really bright okay so let me get going with that and uh, I'll be back okay guys take out this light switch you got to take this this goes in there which screws into this so you take that out and then you pull pull this out from the side and uh, pry this plug out and put it in there and stick it back in there okay just figure I'd show you we'll be right back okay guys there it is off on headlights okay um yeah you had to take those out and turn them 180 to uh if they didn't work and only one worked so i had to take it all out and i actually took it up by the battery run two wires and tested each one and it looks like i probably got one out over here but it's good enough i mean this thing had no lights whatsoever so now it's I think there's one bulb must be out here but anyway it's good enough you know we got the uh, the only one that I got working is a brake light there I mean I think I showed you before the rest were check engine light and choke and fasten seat belt so I just left the Either left the bulbs out or didn't bother putting good ones in, but Okay, well that's good enough for that. I'll be back. Okay guys next morning Went to AutoZone picked up the brake lines I thought I, I mentioned in the other video that I cut the brake line on that black one Because it was doing the same thing as this one No fluid coming out and pump the brakes and all the fluid came out of the I got a bunch of comments saying oh it's the brake hose the brake hose well yeah I figured that out so I cut the hose off here pump the brakes and fluid come out so obviously these lines were collapsed hoses were collapsed not letting it through the caliper but of course at the beginning I was saying I was gonna get calipers but I'm just uh, thinking out loud because you know the first thing you think of is bad calipers but obviously I'm checking the hoses first so that's what we're gonna do not on this video though uh, we'll change these hoses next video and see if we can get fluid going through the calipers if not the calipers are $29.99 each through AutoZone but anyway we'll we'll try them they'll have to be replaced anyway okay just got the box of uh, Rear shocks and front struts. Uh, these better be the struts. Because these look like the rear shocks. It's a shock of us. I guess I should open them up. They're supposed to be. Uh, if I can find a razor blade now. I just hope I don't get a bunch of wrong parts, but that would be typical for this car. Just fight me every step of the way. I'd be in. Hang on. Yeah, that's the strut. Okay. Two front struts, two rear shocks. Yeah, I should have waited, and then I could put these shocks on while I did the coil springs but that's okay there's it's pretty simple to do 
we'll do that next video uh the coil springs to me they look way way too big but they may not be if they are wrong i'm sending them back and we're going to use the front coil springs off the 91 parts car because it was a v8 you know v8 v6 is supposed to be different and on camaros too uh, i didn't go pick up see if the windshield came in today sunday i'll just go there monday pick it up be there for sure hopefully it ain't broke they're leaving it outside on a glass stand so I'll be out there all weekend probably uh okay uh i showed the floor driver's side floor has got a few rust holes in it from weather stripping or sunroof or t-top leaking or whatever uh just like this one this one's the windshield's out but it's full of water so i just took the seat out pulled the carpet back and we're gonna cut i didn't realize that there was i thought it was just this rear section but there's some up here actually when i test drove around the property it was just banging on the ground so uh i think it might have pushed through some rust in fact this one looks like it's starting to but i don't know anyway i'm just going to take a sawzall and i'm going to cut it cut along here uh just cut the whole thing out and then we'll trim it to fit or patch that one later on not today i i got too much going on today but we can get the sawzall and buzz this out of there and uh hopefully i had a couple of new blades but people been using them and i think they're all dulled out now but as long as the blades are sharp we'll get this thing cut out here in the next few minutes and uh we'll go from there okay i'll be back okay guys <laughs> i cut way more than i need but that's it here i think it's dented maybe not I don't know might just be the curvature of it looked like it was looked like it was dented right here anyway yeah I had a little trouble cutting through them braces but we're just gonna cut out what we need uh, next video so anyway we got that done the only other thing I could foresee is these front coil springs if those new ones are wrong other than that, we can push this, tow this thing back over there. Uh, so I think we'll wrap this video up with that, guys. Uh, I think that's all I need to go over. So next video, we're going to get busy. Got the windshield, front struts, front shocks, rear shocks. The... Wiper motor is on the way. Don't know when that's going to get here. Pretty soon, though. Probably do that next video. Brake hoses. We'll check out the... Uh, hopefully, we get the front ones working. And then we'll go with the uh, the rear. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's factory. Because it's a Posi GM uh, disc brake but there's no emergency brake cables going to it. So it makes me wonder if somebody swapped this in there. Uh, so I don't know, we'll find, we'll find out next video too, or shortly thereafter, and we'll have to go over, because the caliper's doing the same thing. No fluids coming out of the calipers on the rear, but at least get the front done for now. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so yeah, we got a ton of work, guys. Uh, and somebody messaged me and says, oh, that, that's probably not an 85. It's got the 91 ground effects on. Yeah, y'all need to follow along. Very first video I went over this. It is an 85 because I got the title and the VIN number's the same and everything. So, at some point... They put 91 to 92 ground effects on it. I mentioned that in the first video, just like this one's a 91. 
and that was a mod back in the day people liked the 91 92s better and they would get them and put them on the older ones uh i think that's about all i want to go over so if i don't get back with you some message about i don't have any power seats these are two parts cars and manual seats uh i got a windshield wiper motor somebody messaged me about that i think that's probably about it guys so yeah we got the parts let's get this thing back up to ride height uh and we'll go from there okay thanks everybody for watching like comment share subscribe all that stuff and we'll see y'all next video thanks everybody for watching